It makes a distinction between inside and outside. Just uh, raising consciousness is puffing. Hmm? Raising consciousness is puffing. It's puffing, yeah, in a sense. <laughs> well, raising or lowering. <laughs> The distinction between inside and outside again, what is it? Oh, I'm going to get ahead of myself. It's our hand. Our hand bridges between inside and outside, between conscious will and physics. Rabbi Kaplan here, this is marked in the right place. Yes, thank God, the place marked in this correct for change. Even miracles can happen in lecture. Kaplan, quoting traditional sources, says the only link between nonverbal wisdom in Hebrew. And verbal understanding, Bina, the builder, the outside, consists of the letters of the alphabet. So now we're getting a sense of what this alphabet was intended to do. The bridge between heaven and earth. Between the transcendence one can reach in meditation of the, the spiritual sun, the transcendent God, and the physical universe ruled by the sun, not the Paul, the take the materialist, be projected. So the alphabet is, is the means of projecting the transcendent into the physical. It's the means by which God projects the universe from his will of creation. It's the means by which we project our incarnation from our birth consciousness from the war. I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to get back to that. All right, so the first thing we found is that the first person, Genesis, maybe smoke rings in the cosmic jungle. When I open it up, it's cross section, they're not circular, they're elliptical. In the middle, there would be seeds. Um, in fact, this is making me think of the additional discussion in the introduction of the Zohar, which I shouldn't have closed because I shouldn't refer to it again. Maybe I should find it again. Where did my mind? Here it is. Okay, now continuing, he says, um, the word lily symbolizes the congregation of Israel and has 13 leaves surrounding on all sides. We can take this to be our apple also. The center sphere is the seeds, and the 12 around form a spherical shell, which is the fruit. He says, for this reason, the lily symbolizes the cup of blessing, as there are five words between the second and third Elohim mentioned in the book of Genesis. One of these words is or, meaning light. This light was treated and became enclosed as an embryo in the covenant, and entering into the lily as principle of light made it fruitful, and this is what is called in scripture, fruit tree, according to Genesis, fruit tree, yielding fruit whose seed is in itself. And as this light principle entering into the covenant caused itself to become manifested in 42, kind, 42 kinds of secondary matter, so, it, so has it produced the Shem Hamaforish, the great ineffable divine name of God, composed of 42 letters which operate in the creation of the world. Um, it just happens to turn out that if you were to put another layer of spheres on top of these, the next layer would be 42. Here it is. <clears throat> and so what we're going to see next is that our apple here can be thought of as a fruit tree yielding fruit whose seed is in itself. How so? Well, let's make a little expansion here. We have to back up a bit because I forgot to tell you something. These two donut forms, which are made up of these seven colors, have two different ways of organization. One of them has three turns around the hole for each one turn through it, and the other one has three loops through the hole for each one turn around it. If we throw away the donut and just keep these guys, to mathematicians, this is the important part, to philosophers, this is the important part, we're not making physical donuts, this is conceptual. This is what's left. If we cut it in half, for reasons which are complicated to explain now, but basically when you get an asymmetrical form, this is the kind of symmetry to it. By the way, this is the form that generates three letters. It looks a little more like a discus than the Euclidean form. The Greeks were into that. But of course, the Greeks also handed off the Olympic torch.
hand it along with the torch. This looks a little like a flame, doesn't it? See the flame shape? Torah was written, this is the finger model. The Torah is written by the finger of God. In fire, there's the flame, there's the finger. This is a way. It's one finger. There's the flame. In the Muslim tradition, the Arabic letters are said to derive from the second surah, the second letter of the second surah of the Quran, and the super letter La, and La also means flame. In Hebrew, the letters are written in flaming fire on the tablets of Moses. Fire and flame also. We can do more with that. Now, if this form then is representing our donuts, it could also represent our apples. This vortex form defines the apple. And if so, then this would be where the star of seeds is in the middle of the apple, five pointed star of seeds, not a six pointed star, so our five pointed star. This little vortex part represents the fruit tree. See what blossoms out. And this, out here, the fullness of the fruit. And so we had a fruit tree, yielding <laughs> fruit, growing into fruit, whose seed is in itself. And so that was our second identification. This is the first verse of Genesis, grows the apple, the sacred fruit, the first fruit, the fruit of temptation. There's also an apple-shaped fruit that's formed on the, of the ashes used on the altar in Solomon's temple, which is not being done anymore. And they call it an apple. The word in Hebrew for apple is puach. And if we look on our alphabet charts later, we'll find out that puach means to puff through itself. Literally. So our second identification of the first verse of Genesis is that it produces this apple form. And here it is again, this is showing a double form. I literally just wrote out the stages in the growth of the fruit tree on the vortex that defines the fruit. So the center is a star of seeds. It's also the sun and the earth. Here we have the stem, the trunk, the sprout. Here are the leaves and branches. Here it buds out. Here's the fullness of the fruit. Here's the flowering. Here's where the seeds fall back to the earth. And the, the petals of the flower fall back to the earth. Petals fall, fall on God, and the seeds hit the fertile ground and are reborn and start over again. Fruit tree of the fruit, the seeds and so on. <clears throat> now, if there were a uh, five pointed star here of seeds, and since this is a crescent shaped form, we would have a Muslim star and crescent. We also have a Latin plant. It's the reflection. In the story of Exodus, <clears throat> Moses has to get some craftsmen together to build the tabernacle. And he calls for the people who are the highest workers in gold and silver and brass. Now, we haven't done the alphabet chart yet, and we definitely want to do that. So you'll have to get ahead of me, get ahead of me and go through the analysis of the four of these. Now, clearly, in the physical world, we're talking about craftsmen who are going to build an art box. That's the story. And we know they built our box. No problem with that. But at the spiritual level, we're not talking about something physical. We're talking about spiritual gold, spiritual silver, and spiritual brass. And so we have to look at the letters to see what those words might mean. Let me ask you this. This is a good, good chance for everyone to get involved. I would like people to suggest to me, in the ancient world, something that is golden. What golden thing associated with life would have been known in the ancient world. And in modern world, too. The suggestions? Sun. The sun, good. Anything else? It's important. The sun, uh, honey. Honey? I hadn't thought of honey. Um, I don't even know how that fits in. I'm thinking about that. That's the one. Anybody else? An apple. An apple's not all gold. Grain is gold. Grain, seed is gold. Let's see. The tip here. Is a golden point. Look at the Hebrew word for gold, Zahab, Zion Hey Day. Zion, from the word Zerah, meaning to grow or see, means Zion really means a weapon or a spear or projection, something that sprouts, that grows. It's cognate to the English letter G. Go, grow. Hey, the letter Hey in Hebrew 
is like this. It's got an inside and an out one. For you, it's inside and an outside. Connecting inside and outside. Bay. In. In itself. What grows connects inside and outside to the self-contained? The seed. So that's what that kind of goal is in a spiritual sense. Something that has the ability to propagate, to reach for the sun. The spiritual sun. <clears throat> what is silver? Silver in Hebrew is kesem. means money now. Kaf in Hebrew, literally left kaf, means palm. And saf is our good old aim saf. The creation stuff, the fullness of the universe. Here's my palm, here's my palm, and this is the fullness of the fruit. It's infinitely far from its seed, conceptually, right? Fruit is a whole generation from the seed. It's infinitely far. So kesa, silver, is this part. It's not our part, it's kesa, it's in my palm. And it's far from the seed. And what is brass or copper, which is the third component that we have to press in it? Well, I can't get the pronunciation right because I only see the letters. Nefesh, Nefasha, Nefosha, Nefosha. Composed of the word Nefash, Nefosh, and the final T. The T at the end means itself, so it doesn't really enter into the room that strong. Nefash is the word used in the Genesis story for the serpent. That's the same. The serpent, the attractor, the allure. What draws the seed out into the fruit? It's the seed reaches for the sun. It is attracted. Mathematically, it's like an attraction. Uh, chaotic attraction. You reach for it. This is the seducer. It seduces the seed into growing into a fruit. And it's the connector, the serpent that connects between the sun and the moon, between the heaven and the earth, between the transcendent and the physical, between the potential and the manifest. And so, on one hand, Moses is calling for craftsmen to build the tabernacle. On the other hand, he's calling for people who know the projective principle needed to reach from consciousness into physics and back. So that's that's our next level. Is our app. Excuse me. There we go. Stay in touch. We won't be alone. Um, that's just for some. It's his level. Yeah, so we have a break here. Um, can I do one last little piece of it? Okay. It'll take a minute. How much do we have for breaks then? Uh, we've got a total of half an hour. Okay, well, I'll just, this will be finished up and then we'll have a break. I, it doesn't take much, it's only a minute. <clears throat> this same idea of projecting from inside where the seed is to outside in the fruit is, again, what I'm saying is a hand. I just want to show you where the hand comes from and then we can take a break. When we take our vortex forms and we put them on the real app, like this, this is this one, put on here, maybe in the middle of the way, it should go around the top of the spiral and then run through the holes. We find that these three sections, which are produced by this minimum form, take the shape of the human hand. It's like holding a bowling ball or, or a um, football or an American football or a bowling ball. Come down in here and grip. And so these three outlines are three hands. And the cop will say there are three hands. There's a right hand, a left hand, and a strong hand. When you catch a ball, you pull it against your body, you have a right hand, a left hand, and then your strong hand is the rest of you. You're never done it. It's fine. <coughs> okay, the break is suggested. Are there any questions before we break? We will start after the break, going through the alphabet and the meditation. And I think maybe we'll leave the last section for more of the details and for some of the technical stuff, because that's what people are going to down anyway. Questions? Questions? Uh, you said that the center of the apple was the five-pointed star. Mm -hmm. Is the fruit the six-pointed star? Mm -hmm. Not quite, but that's the way. Yeah. This is, you see the six-pointed star. This is a, these, these are equivalents. Okay? I'm going to show in more detail. Any other questions now? Yeah, I have a question about the rate of time, because the forest <coughs> mm -hmm. flips around itself, so it goes more rapidly, the vortex half goes in, mm -hmm. has more spin. Right. So, that'll come up with the rate of time. That's right, it does indeed. In fact, let me be really gross and wild a minute here. I'm not only going to say, this is the app 
Galilee, I'm going to this in Newton's happening. Sir Isaac Newton, the discoverer of the laws of motion of gravitation, attributed his discoveries in his writings to his studies of the text of Genesis. He got thrown out of Trinity College for doing it, too, because Christian authorities that were running the college didn't like that kind of stuff. This form is specified by the laws of motion we think. I haven't got that to really finish yet. But basically, there was a uniform expansion this way, uh, a uniform rotation, a uh, linear conservation of angular momentum this way, and in that we're square law up and down. So this is the gravitational axis, and this is conservation of angular momentum. And so you get a combination of, of constant, linear, and square law. Three levels, of course. All of these come in threes. Everything comes in threes here. Why threes? Very fundamentally basic. Let me finish that. It's easy. It takes three to establish any full cycle. If you want to specify a circle, you have a theater marquee, and you have lights flashing. If you only have two lights flashing, it looks just like a line. But if you have three lights that chase each other, you see a circle. It takes a truck at three points to determine the diameter of the circle, determine the circle, the cycle, any kind of cycle. And that's also why you get these threefold patterns here for the subtle reasons for each other. Any other questions? You combine it to the structure of the body? Mm -hmm. You combine it to the structure of the body? Um, yes, but I'm not. Probably not going to get to that a little bit. I've only just started mapping some of the body. I've been doing this uh, in a very uh, mathematical way. So I don't have a lot that I can tell you about that, but I'm almost certain that has to be the case. Um, you can see it in the sets because you see the body models the same thing. There were, there were 12 or 13, depending on how you count them, junctions in the human body from the tip of the toe to the, to, to the tip of the finger. Each, each of these sections or each of these joints, including the head, neck, jaw stuff, you get this 12, 13 head of growth spec also. And of course, the mind is the fruit of the body. Or the other way, the seed of the body. Yes, you can see, the mind rejects the body. And so the mind is the center point of the 13, and the body is what's projected from it. Because our physical our physicality, according to this theory, is projected from our consciousness. So maybe this is the goal, and this is the source of the yeah. So you can do that. And, they, and the traditional cobbles do these mappings of the tree of life and the body and these, these forms we're talking about. Um, my understanding of the tree of life is this. These are the 12. These are the 10. We can talk about that later too after the break if you want to ask that the camera. Discuss it. Anything else? We're all looking. Where's the eye? Are we, am I going too far? Anybody not following at all? No, I'm just uh, that's a lot to know. That's why I need to know. Oh, it's fun. So I want to, I want to not you know, prevent me from going into any more detail. I, I do want to show you all these beautiful toys that I made, and I have a lot of time in them, and they do all kinds of neat things. You know, everything opens up and whirls around and all that kind of stuff. But what's, I think that'll be much more understandable, and that you can lead with, is some sense of what these letters mean and where the meanings come from. And so I want to do that for the next section. And that's what we'll, that's what we'll do there. Okay? Great. We need to figure out how long. Let's just, um, very so let's
But this looks very complicated and very mathematical. And what the hell is he doing? It's got to do with hyperdimensional spheres and all of that. Oh, by the way, speaking of hyperdimensional spheres, as soon as I show you this, I want to show you a hyperdimensional sphere. And then we'll do the algebra. This guy, which looks complicated and, and very mathematical, is nothing other than the opening in a martial arts exercise where you pull your arms and rotate apart, except it's being done in three directions at once. So that's one physical connection. These three loops, again, showing how this opening takes place, are the same as the three loops here, or the three loops here, or the three loops if you want through it this way. And by the way, if anybody wants to ask you where the part is in all of this, well, look at the part shapes. All of these vortex forms have part shapes through the middle. See, in this section here. And here's another one, this is one of these two. See the heart sitting, it's, it got a little dashed by the airway. It's a lot dashed. <clears throat> the hyperdimensional sphere. You know how mathematicians make hyperdimensional cubes. We've all seen them. It's called a tesseract or a hypercube. You make a cube, and you put a little cube inside, and you connect up the corners. I think most of you have seen that, that drawing. Putting a little cube inside of a big cube is a way to make a hypercube. Putting a little sphere inside of a big sphere makes a hypersphere. Putting a little sphere inside of a big sphere, an apple, is a hypersphere. If you allow for the projection of its seeds into its fruit as the hyper direction, the time direction sometimes. So if anybody ever asks you if you can show them a hypersphere, point to an apple. Okay. Now what I want to do is the meditation that displays the letters to show you how it maps onto the body and gives meaning to the letters in the 22 letter alphabet mapped onto the linear form of the body. And then we're going to go and look at the 27 letters mapped onto the idealized hypersphere, the fertilized egg that's going to grow into the body. Okay? <clears throat> so I think I'll stand away from the table so that can be seen. I don't know if that camera's on, but a little close up here. Just. Okay. <clears throat> this is a right-handed model, and this is a left-handed model. The rabbi has left, but some of you probably know that uh, Orthodox Jews, when they pray, put on lacquers, fill it, which are little boxes that you bind on your arm and on your hand and on your forehead. Well, you bind it on your hand. This is bound on the hand. And because you can see your hand in your mind's eye, it is also bound on your forehead, on your, on your mind. <clears throat> and because the hands are an extension of the heart chakra, it's also bound on your heart, on your body. And in fact, if you look at these forms in pairs, there's again your heart forms. And of course, the heart muscle is literally seven layers of muscle wound like this. <clears throat> so if you really got all models at the same time, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my hands in a sequence of gestures, which I did Friday, I think also. When I say a letter, I can see the outline of that letter off of this chart in my right hand. If you could crawl around, look through my left hand into my eye, you would see the letter in my left hand. So this one is for me, and this one's for you. Each letter corresponds to a particular gesture. <clears throat> In general meaning, the gesture is the meaning of the name of the letter. And then we're going to find <clears throat> that those letter meaning names can be used to cite the words in just about any language if you know the phonetic correspondences. Now, if you don't know the phonetic correspondences, you may take it to yourself. So I really only know English and a little Hebrew, so I can't do it with a lot of languages. But we have tried to kind of challenge by people who know other languages and we play with it. Again, this is work in progress, so I don't want to make it too strong a claim. Also, when you translate words, you can't get the idiomatic meaning. That's asking an awful lot. You get the operational meaning. For instance, the word Sabbath only means the seventh day of the week if you understand the model of 601 with the Sabbath being the still center in the middle. This is the Sabbath point in the middle. But you couldn't get that from the word. Sabbath means to sit within yourself. It means to meditate. That you can get. So I'm going to tell you the name of the letter. I'm going to tell you 
tell you what the letter means, and I'm going to show you the gesture, and I'm going to go through the motion. And we're going to get 22 meanings arrayed on bottom gestures, and then we're going to expand that with the five final letters that are set to redeem the alphabet, to cause the redemption. It's not so sure it's about the alphabet. On the full system. Now, the relationship is simple. The 22 letters refer to the body as it is mature and grown. The 27 letter define the surface of an idealized hypersphere, a fertilized egg. An egg with a sperm inside, inside and outside sphere. Hollow means everything, all, according to my solar plexus. Bay, the distinction between inside and outside, is like birthing and the babies in my hands. Gimel, camel, means action. Camel goes back and forth between the oasis and the desert. So gimel is a kind of rotating, rotating motion, action. Dala means to divide, means to pour, to pour down, to be poor. This is Dala. People who know Hebrew should be able to see a Dala there. Dala. Pouring down, dividing. Hey, the frame, means a window. I can see a hay right there. You should be able to see it also. Vog means pin. I take that to be the spine. It's just this vertical section of the spine. Zion is an arrow or a sphere. It means to project. And Zion right there. Those who know the Rashi letters will see a Zion. Pick right over there. So you find yourself. Head means to encircle or to encompass. A hat, a hut, head. It's my perimeter. I can see it. My hands extend the perimeter of my waist here outside. Tet means all or complete, to hold the ball. Tet, you take this in my hand right here. <clears throat> yod means a hand that could be any place. It's just a short part, so I can't really tell you which part is yod, except it's in between tet and kuf. Tet and kuf. Kuf means the palm, and there's the kuf sitting right there. Lamed means to learn. Lamed reflects. The light will reflect it directly into my eyes. So when I point it directly at me, I will see a lama right here. You can see the lama standing there. Yeah, the lama. Mem means source or from or out of. The source of speech is the throat. The only place you can see the, the mem shape when it's in your hand without breaking the wrist off is here at your throat. Nun means a neck, a connector, a nexus. And so nun is like this. And you can see the nun in the arch here. Sound means to support or sustain. Sound, create one. And sound is in my hand. I am the eyes. I see an eye in my put my hands up to my eyes. You'll see the eye like right that. Like blinders on a horse. Eye. K means mouth. It's the only place you can see the pay if you move your thumbs in your mouth. K also means the puff. You can see it. Sign means righteousness. Clean hands, showing you the back of my hands, so you can tell that I'm righteous. Like Ku is a monkey. We went to the zoo yesterday. Walking we around, sat. It was the only thing we could do. You see the monkeys dangling from the tree limbs. Ku, monkey. I think it looked like a monkey, whether that or not. Race is the head or to radiate. There are the rays, the races on my forehead. A little like Moses' description. Horns, graves, forehead. Sheen is a tooth, toothy grain to shine. Sheen blocks the sunshine or radiates from my throat, from my head. Sheen, I can see the sheen in my hands. And tub means itself or myself. I come back down here and look myself. <clears throat> so it's olive, bay, gemel, dollar, pay, bug, zion, pet, tet, yud, bug, lamed, mem, nun, samet. I, Pei, Sai, Kuf, Reish, Shin, Ta. Some of these may be wrong. This is work in progress. Some of my motions are not as smooth as they would be if I were a meditator or a yogi or had more practice. We need to work these things out. Don't take this as the truth. Take it as an example of how it might be, and maybe you can make it better. <clears throat> so let's go through the means. Uh, I think I did most of them. Um, you see what I'm saying is that all of the whole, whole things, the solar plexus, the baby is birthing, it's 
distinction between inside and outside. Gimel is action, is flipping over. Okay, I call it to be poor, poor down, and divide. Hey, your friend, both the pin and the spine, Zion, the projectile, gun, game, go on, and get down to the chart too. Head, English cut, or hat, the thing that circles. Ted, teeth, literally, completeness. Beyond birthing, you have to wean the child, that's when it's complete. That's what a tent or a teeth is. A tie connects to the same word. Uh, Yoda against just the hand, let's bring my hands forward. Yoda is such a small letter, you can see it almost anywhere, so I don't know the exact gesture for that. I'd be phony if I told you, because I can see it any place. But it has to be between Ted and Huff, so we know where approximately where it is. Huff, the Huff shape is here, it's backwards for you. It's here. Um, Lama, again, I showed you is to learn, to go towards, reflect inward, abstraction, learn. Uh, Nam, the source, the throat, the source of speech. Nun, the neck, nexus, the connector. Sana, the supporters of saying. I am the eyes, head the mouth, Sadi, the righteous person, reaching up, zodiac, Sadi. Kuf, the monkey, Raish, the head, to radiate. Sheen, to shine, and Tet, a tub, myself, or itself. Okay? Um, I don't know, you may want to try this at some point. You want to do an exercise of it, folks? But I'm, I'm, we're going to make these models available later. Hopefully they will be available for getting the day now. At least we've got a lot of glasses. Um, <clears throat> clearly it would be better to be doing the gestures with the appropriate tone in the music. Uh, it would be better to not only do the hand gestures, but also have body gestures. Uh, let me read you a quick quotation just to give you a little more context for this form now I'm going to show you. <laughs> Sufi poet described the round dance. And should we give something to just kind of And in the round dance he describes, well I'm not going to find it, I don't want to take the time. He describes a round dance with a cypress tree in the middle of a garden, or a rose garden. And again, you can see the word for rose or lily is the same in Hebrew. And so that drawing I showed you before of the lilies could also be a drawing of roses. And he talks about a waterfall or a fountain. And you can read the music for the book. So I, I'll find it later if anybody wants to quote it because I didn't write this. Um, also, there's many more traditions that I didn't mention. People are asking about astrology. Well, if I've got three hands, and each hand has four fingers and a thumb, then these can be the four rivers that feed the tree in the middle of the garden. Eat. And if I have three of them together, then I have 12 fingers around the center. 12 knights around the round table, 12 houses, 12 apostles, 12 tribes, 12 imams. And on my right hand, it's a hand. But since it's an apple, there's a stem coming out here. So on my left hand, it's the scabbard and hilt of the sacred sword. And so I have 12 knights around King Arthur's sword, around the round table. Uh, we also have Plato's allegory of the cave. Here's the cave, here's the sun, here's the earth plank. Uh, I'm sorry, Rabbi Left, this is a far out one. There's a story of um, Rabbi Hilla who was challenged to provide the, 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 the essence of the Torah while he was standing on one foot. And so there's an anecdote about Torah on one foot. And the answer he gave when challenged was, the Golden Rule, don't put it to anyone else what you wouldn't have done to you, don't study the rest of his commentary. Well, this is not a golden mean spiral, it's a golden rule spiral. And it stands on one foot. Maybe. It's hard to identify this kind of thing because you can never really be sure. Same thing with the Newton's Apple story. It's very hard to be sure. Now I asked you all to think about the meaning of letters. And that's what I want to do next. Any, any questions here before we move on the, on the movements or anything like that? Yeah, basically one. Um, there's something about uh, looking at the manifestation of the symbol when you can put it all the way up to the fingers. Uh, but the fingers are just part of the whole quality dynamism. And the systems uh, of 
integration of governance, agile, and then three levels and all that. This is part of functioning of interfacing at different levels. And for example, in uh, acupuncture, uh, they work with the same interfacing, uh, but then it will be incoming energy, outgoing energy, right. being interfaced. But they also work with the levels of four, five bones, four bones, mm -hmm. three bones, two bones, and one bone. And those levels of interacting are all based on these same dynamisms. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I'm trying to find more of the, the dynamics behind it, mm -hmm. uh, which you're trying to put forward in the gestures of the, uh, say, dance, because of the well, But I, I, I'm sort of longing to see more of the uh, non-physical form uh, beyond the shapes which you put out. I don't know how much of that I can do uh, at this point without going out on limbs that I'm not sure of. Um, other than the most important thing about acupuncture you didn't mention, and that is the meridians are laid out on each person by the measure of their own hand. And that's not. Okay, the hand well, is the measure of the whole system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The different measures of different yeah. parts of the body, so it's not, it's not the whole system. Okay. Um, the 22 letters <coughs> lay out, I think you have those charts, on uh, this linear form. And one can consider this unit of DNA, this is what Mr. Fuller's model again, yeah. of uh, 11 textures. Sure. Yes? So, you say, uh, I cannot answer this question because uh, I'm not going out of the internet, but I'm sure of mm -hmm. uh, What's the problem with that? Well, I just don't feel that I, I should say things that I don't have a reasonable confidence to correct. I mean, there are a lot of things that can be said, and a lot, I think that it's, it doesn't serve to I've seen a lot of different arrangements of how this is projected onto the body, and I'm just not satisfied myself as to which ones are the ones that should be you know, used for this. So, I can show you what, what I have, which is basically what I'm going through, but... Yeah, I really... Well, maybe it's easier to look at it the other way around. <coughs> that the body and the gesture of the body are just manifestations of this underlying process, which also needs to form like yeah, that. Definitely. And what I was saying is it should be on multiple levels. There are hand gestures which I'm showing you, but I don't have the body gestures worked out. I have, I mean, you can make different letters. Here, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> what, what I don't want to do. Um, if you look at some of these older, oh, it's not on this chart. Well, there's an older version of the letters, the, the, the Canaanite letters, the, which are more stick -looking. When I was going through doing these hand meditations, the hand motions for the letters, I was beginning to notice that in most cases, the articulation between the hand, the arm, and the body made the older letter shape, whereas the hand made the new letter shape. But it wasn't distinct enough that I could be sure of whether it's true or not, or which one was which. So I can tell you that in principle. But I can only encourage you to do it yourself. This is a self-organizing system. If you pick up the thread any place and pull on it, slowly it will lead you to the next place. So while I don't necessarily want to give you what I think about mapping on the body, off the body, if you start to do the hand gestures, I think you'll find very quickly you're going to be forced to see the corresponding body motions. And you probably know more than I do here. So maybe uh, you might want to suggest some yourself. Right? Anything else for the other part here? I, I would like to to give some sense of of, of this model, this this system that I've laid out, which is also which I'm going to tell you. Because it also shows how you connect a kind of archetypal embryonic organization to these means. There is a, a mathematician in the United States who worked years on uh, helicopters, made a lot of money, and opened something called the Institute for the Study of Consciousness in Berkeley, a fellow named Arthur M. Young. And uh, <clears throat> he has a theory about his book, called Reflex of the Universe, an excellent book. Uh, he lays out a theory process based on seven stages and seven programs on the dome. And <clears throat> his theory is very elaborate, very well done, and connects to the quantum theory and everything. Basically, what Arthur says, is that all processes 
had seven stages, and these outer titles are his, he did several different versions. He said they always organize the same way. Um, you start with a goal that you want, um, and you finish up with its attainment. Um, you get to your goal because you move. You're attracted, it's a sort of charge that attracts you. And the inverse of that is what leads you to the attainment. Um, so you project the goal, you move towards it, it takes on its own center, it recreates its own seed, if you will. Um, here it grows off the seed. And then in the middle, Arthur says, there's this fur, this transcendental fur, this is an involution, this is an evolution, if you will. It's just, again, like a thought of all he's really saying is that you can take these seven holy regions in order and you can pull through them. And what I noticed is that you can take Arthur's seven stages, which I've got little pictures for here, breaking open, action itself, division, opposite, closure, projection, and multiplication. Between action and projection is co-action acting together. <clears throat> and I suspended them all between unity and wholeness, between the seed and the fruit. Because Augur is dealing with the vortex form, the nafash, the snake. And I'm saying the snake is the attractor that connects the seed to the sun, or the sun to the seed, or the seed to the fruit, whatever they be, be the whole thing. And so you really have nine levels. Seven suspended between seed and fruit, between the head and the body between the point sphere and the sphere point. And then you can take that sequence of meaning, opening, action, division, co-action, multiplication, projection, closure, and wholeness. And you can do it, I've got two versions here, and there's three level out, three level torus, three sections inside of each other, which is like the Penrose Twister, three toruses inside each other. <clears throat> and then I've opened them up here so it's easier to see in this menorah form in these three levels. 